Yay! Yes! Yay! Come on! Woohoo! Got that! Woohoo! 3 1! Yeah, 3 1, they've just scored again. James from the halfway line. Get in there. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, this is really good because we've been crap. <laughs> Get in. This does mean I'm going to be in a really good mood. Yeah, I'm just about to go on live. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant, everybody. The keeper have got a water finish from Dan James. <laughs> An impossible angle. And hello from uh, Connor here, One Leeds HQ. You have just caught me live as Leeds United have batched in the third to wrap things up for United on a massive evening of which we've been shocking. Have we been second best? That's up to much debate, to be quite honest with you. But Leeds United have come out of it with the third. Dan James, after a, a really dismal performance, has just put the ball in the back of the net from the halfway line. Oh, you just don't believe it when it comes to this club. And it looks like this is going to be it. We've still got moments left. We've got moments left. And according to a few people, that is it. And I believe that is it. Let me, net, let me know in the comment section below. Are we done? Still, plus nine, Leeds United are still going. Keep getting your comments in, everybody. We'll be back with your live, your live reaction, of course, straight after this. Ah, oh, Rutter. Save, Melier. Well done, well done. We're still going full time. Oh, it's massive. It is a massive, massive win for Leeds United. 3-1 in a game where... Listen, if we're being honest, we were second best. We were second best. Georgie says, let's go. The merch is in. The link in the description below. We've got loads of it, everybody. Loads of one Leeds, Leeds United stuff. Hello. Welcome to the stream. It's Conor McGilligan. Leeds United have defeated Hull 3-1. Who on earth saw that 10 minutes ago? But how many times have we said that with Leeds United? It reminded me a little bit of the Leicester City game, barring the Leicester chances. Leeds on the ball, thoroughly, in my opinion. I always talk about boxing matches and I really want to be transparent with you guys. I don't want to be that guy who comes on here and just says, because of the result, we were brilliant. That's not how I'm at with it whatsoever. I can't believe we've won that game in all honesty. Hull, much better on the ball. Much better on the ball. I thought we're, we're the better team for large, large portions of that. Leeds wasteful, sloppy in possession. But somehow we've got the win and that felt very Barnsley. Marcelo Bielsa's Barnsley when we just couldn't get through Barnsley in that, I believe it was the 1890s. That was the, the season we went up, sorry. Uh, well, the 1819 season, yes, uh, with uh, Ben White and co. We just could not get through them, could not get through them. And, and they had a few chances to kill us off. And the nerves were wrangling there. Leeds United, lucky to get out of that one, I have to say. Uh, and I think if we're all being brutally honest with you, that is one of those wins where you think flipping heck, that is one that, you, you, you know, at one point, I'll be honest, at one point I'm thinking, I'd, I'd actually take a draw right now. Not because Hull was so dominant in terms of chances, but we just couldn't touch the ball. We couldn't touch the ball. Um, I'm going to get into uh, a few notes that I made through the game. Everybody, please get your, your comments in the section below. I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to try and break down the game a little bit, and we're going to go through the euphoria of the last oh, of the last however many minutes. But what I wanted to say is, is you know, I said that a team would fall off. I said that a team is going to almost be dead and buried. I said it at the start of the weekend and Leeds have come through this. And I, I don't think we'd have been dead and buried as such. But what Ipswich have done this week and what they've done today, again, listen, we had to win this game. We had to win this game. No draws. It was a must-win game. And Leeds United have come through with another clutch moment like Ipswich did late, uh, earlier on like Leicester did early on, and it's now a three-horse race. Southampton, in my opinion, are completely done now. They are completely done. It is of three. And this is what I said at the start of the weekend. This is how it's going to be. This is how the land is going to lie at the end of this weekend. Monday, there will be a team out of it. And that team right now is Southampton, which helps us a little bit because looking at the games that we've got left, Southampton at the back end of the season, it's just almost going to be another game for them, really. So you're hoping Leeds have got that motivation if we are still clamoring for that top two and hopefully you know well hopefully by then we've sealed it up but you know you feel like this is going to be going down to the white switch with a win all teams winning by three 
goals today. Um, but let's get into a couple of, of, of points, everybody. I thought Hull's pressing was unbelievable. They've got one of the best away forms in the division. They did it versus Southampton. Southampton massively struggled and Hull won the game 2-1. They've got players on the pitch like Philogene. They've got players on the pitch like uh, Carvalho, um, a two fan, I thought was brilliant in that false nine. Leeds were just struggling. And we, we when we've p- played against teams who have pressed us high this season, Swansea in the first half, Southampton down at St. Mary's, Stoke City, uh, Sunderland for parts of that game, even though we're in a mid block, Leeds just struggled so much. They struggle so much to get beyond that third, that, that phase. And the reason because it is because there's so much space between the defence, the midfield and the attack. So Jorginho Rutter has to come all the way back to defensive midfield to carry the ball 50 yards. And that's that's how the first goal essentially happened, didn't it? It was Rutter coming deep, carrying the ball through. But as a team, as a team on the ball, we have to be honest, Hull were miles better, miles better in the tight pockets on the ball when Leeds pressed them a little bit. Leeds were fumbling the ball a little bit. It was going out of play. It was going left, right and Charlie. It wasn't accurate. It wasn't precise. It wasn't good enough. And it wasn't what we've seen throughout this entire season. But that press from Hull City, our, our out ball was Elan Mele throughout the whole game. And how indicative it was of Leeds's structure going forward was Elan Mele was our out ball. Every single time you'd see Archie, you'd see Ampadu going back to Elan. Whereas Hull City, they'd never go to Allsop. He was a spare man, but they didn't need him. They were okay playing in those pockets. And they had Louis Coyle at centre-back. He's a right-back. They had Slater at right-back. He's a central midfielder, I believe. So they set up really, really well. Um, and, and, and they dominated a lot of the ball for a lot of that game. And, and Leeds, I, I think we, we can all admit as a collective that we've not been good during this Easter break. And, and overall, probably for five or six weeks, uh, five or six weeks, Leeds United haven't been good enough. And at this moment in time, I would have liked to have seen a bit of rotation. I was calling on the channel for Joseph to start. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Anthony, I wanted to come on a little bit early, just a bit of rotation, helping the side a little bit because we don't lose mass mass amount of quality. Even if you are to maybe move Anthony on the other side of the pitch, James got the goal at the end, of course, but throughout the game, wasn't good enough, was he? Giving the ball away, sloppy in possession. Every corner we had, we were physically bigger than a team for the first time in a long time. And every single corner we put in hit the first man. Not good enough. So, listen, overall, you saw Farker really, really stressing, I thought, throughout the game. Um, and I've got down on my notes here that um, Rutter was asked to do way too much. And, and um, yeah, as I say, Le- Leeds were utilising Elan Mele a lot in the build-up. But, listen, let's get through the goals, everybody. Keep... keep um, Keep smash a like on the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. We will get into your thoughts, of course. But um, uh, yeah, we get we get into the game, don't we? And you can tell straight away, Hull have just got a little bit of sass on the ball. And you're thinking, wow, okay. You know, they've just got beat by Stoke City at home. But then you look at the away form and I was doing it on sofa score. You can hit the link in the description below. I've used that loads today. It's been excellent. And I was looking at Hull's last couple of games and they're just very, very good away from home and they're a good football inside and they will not alleviate those principles for anybody. And they're brave. You know, you saw two fans sprinting off the pitch at 1-1. They, it was as if they wanted a winner, but then Louis Coyle's going down four or five times and the ref's giving them fouls and they're rolling round every two minutes, really, in the last 80, 80 90 bracket, which was very weird. Um, but overall, uh, they're a good team. They're a good team and you can see why they are where they are, to be quite honest with you. And probably similarly to Norwich, when Norwich came to Home Road and they were good on the ball and you were thinking, God, are they going to pack a punch? Well, Hull City did pack a punch. Uh, but Leeds went into the lead, obviously. Uh, Byron did really well, won the ball back um, off Philogene. I thought Byron did really well against Philogene. I'll have to say that. I will criticise sometimes um, his, his, his offensive work. Sometimes he gets forward and he's just not, he's not got that technical ability to be a really sprite and quality uh, right back, in my opinion. But he's a graph. That he's a hard worker. Reminds me a lot, in a sense, of, of Luke Aylin. You know, really uh, industrious, got a lot of endeavour and energy and passion. And uh, that sort of drives him through the technical abilities. In my opinion, is not really on the same sort of level as, 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 as maybe even an Archie Gray at right back, to be honest with you. And Connor Roberts, we can have a conversation there. But he did really well, got forward, got his body in. And it's 1-0 and you're thinking... Okay, really good start inside 10 minutes. We've barely touched the ball. They've had 67% possession, but okay, they can keep the ball as long as we keep our heads, our concentration, focus, all this sort of good stuff that we talk about in the previews, the reviews and that. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. Leeds are going to get through this. Um, and then Hull started just getting hold of the ball even more. The midfield, uh, Morton, I thought was excellent for them. I thought um, Seri, as well, I tell you what, everybody, 
I tell you what, if we're looking to make an improvement in our midfield, we can talk Gabriel Sara about how good was that Serian midfield. If Hull don't go up and we do, what a player he is, by the way. In every situation, he was bopping it left, bopping it right. Really good on the ball in terms of just never losing it. And I thought they were good. Leeds were applying a press, but I thought Farker got it wrong in that midfield. And, and I'll tell you why. It's not because he's put Archie in there. I was always a little bit worried about the, the dynamic between Archie and Kamara. And I think you guys will agree with that. But why was Archie the defensive one? <laughs> Archie's the defensive one every single time. Kamara's getting forward. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, you always sort of look at Archie and think he's a number eight. But he's, he's almost playing as a six here. He's, he's playing the Gruev role. And Archie just didn't look comfortable throughout the entire game. And yeah, I thought the balance between those two was was really off tonight. And that's where Hull capitalised through Morton, through Seri. And listen, as we always say on the channel, everybody, you win the midfield battle, you win the game. You know, that is the engine. That's the hub. That's the brain of the operation for any football inside. So yeah, it was, it was, it was a really sort of... Um, tough game of football but then you had a massive chance didn't you and it was another clutch moment for Patrick Bamford um recent you know we've seen it very recently with Patrick Bamford where I'm going to make my case as a lawyer right now but the ball's played into the box I don't care if Charles is getting in front of it I don't care if he's getting in front of it and it's getting but it's almost like it's funny on the channel now because it's like okay Connor you've said this point about nine billion times and nothing you're just working yourself up basically but to put that ball over the bar and to get your foot in that almost shape from two yards out. And it's all fine and dandy now because we've won the game, which is great. And Leeds are in the top two. The destiny is in our own hands. And we'll get into that, of course, but I'm analysing the game a little bit here. Um, he's got to score. And how many times we said that Bamford, we'll talk about Leicester last year. We can talk about Newcastle, the penalty miss, and all these recent things. But he has been he has been decent this year. Patrick Bamford, he's come into form. He's been a lot better. And, and our £16 million striker can't get in the side because of Bamford. So a lot of real plaudits towards him this season. But what I will say is um, that was a massive miss. And there was no one more relieved than him on the pitch when we got that penalty at the end. But um, one player came on and changed the game. Change the game. As I keep saying, it's not an I told you so thing because it's not. Because you're all, a lot of, well, maybe half of you are saying the same thing. Matteo Joseph Sharper. Look what he did to Louis Coyle when he came on for five minutes. Louis Coyle, ex Leeds United player, of course, playing right, uh, right back, playing centre back, went not caused him any problems. Not one problem. Even when the ball was lofted over, we didn't really seem to win any aerial duels. Pat Bamford wasn't giving him any cause for concerns with the runs across the back line. No channel runs really either to sort of shift Louis Coyle out of his centre-back position. No, I didn't think there was a, a pace advantage with with um, Bamford over Louis Coyle at all whatsoever as well when they were in a little bit of a foot race, which happened a couple of times in the first half. Joseph comes on and literally runs him ragged and pretty much causes him an injury. Um, he's physical with him. He's all over him. He's running uh, off that back line all the time, off his shoulder consistently, exactly what you want from a striker. His positional awareness is brilliant because he's always onside. You never really see Joseph offside. Um, and I think his sharp movement is massive. It's massive. And we're not talking Premier League here, everybody. We're in the Championship. No disrespect to the Championship. But this boy can start week in, week out. And I don't care. He's going 20 minutes and he's doing really well. Even It sounds daft. But the jinky movement when he hit the post, Bamford runs in a straight line there. He runs in a straight line. And I'm a massive, massive um, advocate, uh, advocate, I should say, of Pat Bamford's movement. But Joseph's movement there was superb. And I know he hit the post, but the jinky movement to go towards the keeper and for the defender to follow him. And then Joseph recognised that and to pull himself back and then hit the post. It was a wonderful bit of, the mo a bit of movement. I thought on the last line, he was brilliant. He was sharp aggressive, tenacious, all those brilliant words that you want to be attributed to a number nine. And he, he's a shoo-in to start for me. There is more of an upside with him and you don't lose anything bar experience with Pat Bamford. And if, and if Joseph's having a poor game, bring Bamford on. You know, if we can, if we can bring Bam, if we can bring Joseph on at a certain point, why can't we bring Bamford on at a certain point? I think Joseph causes absolute terror in the back line. Uh, in you know when he's coming on, and 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 I think his sharpness, he deserves a start. He deserves a start. Pat's not had a good game tonight again. And can we just can we have a bit of a meritocracy here and not just go with oh well, well you know this has been how it is for a while now because it was how it was for a while with Peru. Then he got replaced by Bamford. I wouldn't mind seeing Joseph start at all, to be quite honest with you. Uh, keep getting your comments in, everybody. Uh, 
Yeah, really interested to see what you this bloody hell. I just had a quick look. I thought there was about the last time I looked, there was 200 of you in the building. There's nearly 1,400 of you. Uh, do me a favor, slap a like on the video, everybody, and let's get through a couple of your comments. Um, hi, Connor uh, from Texas. I'm drenched, and I don't think it's to, to do with the 30 degree heat here. My God, that was hard to watch. It was, mate, really, really hard to watch. I've just seen a couple of people say if, if Hull had better players. Yeah, and I think, I think, um, I think if, if, if Hull had. If Hull had a striker, you got Billy Sharp on the bench. You know, Don Goodman, as much of it, he is an absolute plank and literally speaks about leads. I mean, some of you will call me pessimistic. My God, I can't listen to the guy. I have to have him on mute. I cannot listen to just the absolute drivel that he puts. Oh, Leeds United have to win this game. Leeds United will drop third. Leeds United, Leeds United. That first 15 minutes, he didn't talk about Hull once. It's all about Leeds United and how if we don't do this, this will happen. It is just doomsday scenario with him constantly so i just had to put the geezer on mute but he made a good point in terms of the first half with billy sharp billy sharp's gobbling up those balls into the box into the box that were, they were threading in um so yeah uh we needed ampadu in midfield do you know what um i've 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 mentioned i've mentioned several times several times on here that i don't think cooper is good enough for Leeds united um i think maybe in a, a cup game he's good enough in terms of maybe his proactiveness as, as as that sort of lead centre-back. Rodon's naturally a sweeper, but as that proactive centre-back, I think he'd be good in a cup game. I don't think he'd be good in, a, you know, sort of a consistently playing for Leeds United. Maybe against some of the lower league sides at home. Um, but I, I don't trust him to be in a game of this magnitude. So people were saying, uh, but Ampadu has to go in the midfield. Okay, well, well then what do we do? Yeah, what do we shove Cresswell at the back? Listen, I, I'm 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 okay with Cresswell. I am okay with Cresswell. I don't really want to throw him into a game like this. I really don't. But I think the beauty of this game in particular was Cooper wouldn't have had to go up against an Emmanuel Dennis, an out and out quality centre forward at this level. Cooper would have had to just marshal a, a two fan who was almost playing in like a number ten false nine role, really. So I think that had been all right. The problem areas from Hull City with the midfield coming forward and driving at the defence, they were the problem areas. But we have seen Cooper be that proactive defender. When a midfielder's coming forward, he won't sort of jockey and then hit them. He'll just go straight forward and they'll either skip past him, uh, they'll win a foul or he'll make a great challenge. You know, it's one of three things and two out of the three things normally happen with Liam Cooper, unfortunately. So I didn't really agree with, I'd have loved to have seen Ampadu in midfield and I think it had steadied it up a lot more and would have made him and Archie a little bit more balanced um, or him and Kamara a little bit more balanced. But yeah. Uh, it was never going to happen tonight because, in my opinion, Daniel Farker saw what Liam Cooper did against Watford, which was nothing short of a horror show, um, if we've been brutally honest. So, um, why are why are our set pieces and corners so bad? Uh, to be honest, uh, Matt, it's, it's an interesting one. It is an interesting one because you've got you've got players there who are technically able, but you've got, uh, with the greatest of respect, you've got players who I think can can connect with the ball. Uh, with 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 much more with a much more more pure and clean hit, you know. We're not talking Steven Gerrard clean hits, but you know, you clean hitters in football terms. Leeds United have more of them, and they put Dan James on the corners, and Dan just can't ever seem to get his range ever. He'll hit the first man twice, then he'll balloon it over all of our players. Then, like in the last game, he'll hit it out for a goal kick. So why do we continue and persevere with him on corners? I don't understand it. And then they'll mix it up with Somerville a little bit, but then. You know, we have to be honest, Somerville then hits the first man as well. But let's get into the second Leeds United goal, which we've not touched on everybody. Um, I don't know what Slater's doing. What is he doing? But what I loved was it was the first time we'd taken a risk in the game, really. In the second half, you got Somerville fronting up Slater, fronting up a right back who normally plays in central midfield. We didn't test two out of position players in their back line more than enough. Joseph comes on, he starts testing Louis Coyle. And right at the end, you got Somerville going direct at, um, at, at, at Slater and he couldn't deal with it. You know, he completely panicked by it. And to be fair to Hull, they were doubling and tripling up, but their press was excellent. They were brilliant um, in terms of being on the ball. But that momentary lapse of, uh, of concentration happened with Firpo when Joseph missed and hit the post. But it also happened there as well. And I don't know what he's doing diving in for that. And I'll tell you what, everybody, when they started arguing Perot and, um, and Somerville, I'm shouting at the TV, not now, not now. It's the 87th 
fucking minute. Don't be arguing now. One of you take the ball and put it away. And when Somerville picked it up, I was thinking, he better not miss now. After that, they've just been arguing. Perot looked unhappy. And um, we got away with it. We've got away with it today. But the beautiful thing is, everybody, the games are getting less now. The games are getting less and we are in the top two, albeit there's an asterisk next to it because of Leicester. And Leicester, you know, I, I thought they'd win today. I think everybody thought they'd win today. I was very surprised when Norwich went 1-0 up. But um, yeah, Leicester, I think have got as good a running really as Leeds. So you're expecting them, that both sides maybe to falter at, at, at separate times. I think the toughest game is probably Southampton at home right now. And you wonder, I have to say, I wonder how many pack, how much punch is left in that Southampton side after today, after being 2-1 up until the, what, 70th minute and then completely bottling it, getting a man sent off and conceding two and just going to pot. Your manager is an emotional wreck. And I wonder how, can a Southampton side go to Leicester and bloody their nose a little bit or have they just gone to pot right now because it feels like the bottle's just gone. Um, JBL says, Connor, promotion is out, is out of our hands because Leicester have a game. And that is true, mate. You know, you're not true. Yeah, you're not true. You're not wrong. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. It, you're quite right. You're quite right, um, to be fair to you. Evening, Connor. Uh, didn't enjoy that match, but love the three points. Yeah, exactly, mate. And that's all that's important right now. We have to be honest uh, with each other. Thought Archie and Glenn struggled tonight. You bang on the money there, Dale. Um, Rajiv, hello, Rajiv. Uh, um Channeling the quote, doesn't matter if it was ugly at the end of the day, we won. Yeah, bang on, bang on. Colin's in the building. Big call from Ireland. Colin, are you having another kid uh, in nine months' time, mate? Let me know. Is it going to be a good night uh, for Mrs. Kerwin tonight? Let me know, mate. Uh, cheers, Connor. We've done <laughs> what Ipswich do every game. Gone and scraped to win. Nearly another TV smashed up after that peno scrap between the lads. We move onwards and up was our mate. When they started fighting, I was my missus was behind me and I'm going nuts at the TV. And I think you're all, by the sounds of it, the exact same. Nearly punching the TV. You do not start arguing now, you children. One of you take them freaking penalty but yeah shout out to you Cole. thanks for your donation mate it all goes towards uh, uh the channel uh rodon kept losing the ball which was worried Do you know what michael really good point i thought he had i thought he had a bit of a shocker tonight but he was trying to do as we always say on the channel what pascal does normally which is get the ball and be the proactive one stepping out Ampadu didn't do that as much tonight i think it was because they were pressing on him and if you're pressing on a right-footed left centre back it's going to be really difficult for him to get the ball and move up the pitch so the reliance was on the right footed centre back to be able to move up the pitch and you saw that tonight so Ampadu almost became the coverer whilst Joe Rodon became the proactive one but I thought especially in that first half he had he was struggling a little bit Joe with that press on him and his balls were just not meeting the the, the, the target but yeah I, I mean the, the, for me the overriding point for this everybody is is you know there's got to be I think Daniel Farker has got to start really implementing some rotation sometimes and 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 I've, I've I did a video on Farker not long ago on, on praising his development as a manager as a coach but what I will say is that I think sometimes in, maybe in the last couple of games he, he's got it wrong again and he sort of reverted back to type of these time specific substitutions and he's sort of wedded to this 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 set of players that he's got right now and I think sometimes and especially with how knackered some of them look which I think they do I think a lot of them look knackered they're appro approaching a press not half arsed but fatigued and Hull just looked a lot fresher last night tonight and, and and Watford looked a lot fresher and that's not taken away from their technical abilities I thought both sides played really well and there's an argument both sides deserve to beat Leeds United you know Friday and Monday. There's an argument for it. But Leeds have got four points out of the six. And if we beat Coventry in our next game, seven points out of nine is a really good return. We said it on the debrief, seven points out of nine for the games that we had. Those three games, you know, Watford away on a Friday night and we've had six players available, Hull City and Coventry. If you get that win, if you get two wins and, and a draw, that is a good return. It is a good return. Not a lot of us saw Ipswich did, doing what they did tonight, which I didn't. I thought it'd be a draw, maybe a, a Southampton a sneaker, a Southampton sneaker win. That didn't happen. And and now we are relying on teams to, to hurt Ipswich right now because they're flying. They're, they're, they're one of those teams who it can get to the 90 it can get to 100 minutes and they'll all have full belief that in the 111th minute they're going to score. And there's a lot, a lot, I will say, of Leeds United fans who think the exact same thing about their club. 
I, I think that sometimes right now there's 10 minutes to go and I don't think Leeds are done. There's been teams and teams and teams and teams beforehand who where Leeds United have been involved in, I've thought to myself, nah, we're not, we're not, we're not fit enough. We're not good enough to be able to get a goal here. Um, but that Bielsa team in 18-19 and now this team, I fully expect to score at any time, but Ipswich are just not going away. They can concede two more goals for the next however many you know games, the next however many games, Ipswich are not even everybody. In the last game, their expected goals was 0.65 against Blackburn. They score the goal. Obviously, their their expected goal against Sheff- goals against Sheffield Wednesday was three point something. They score six. Their expected goals today were one point two seven. They score three. They're outperforming their xG, which essentially means that they're ruthless and clinical. And I think we would all agree, Leeds United are probably not ruthless or clinical. Um, but yeah, massive win anyway tonight. Huge win. Uh, play bad, uh, but secure three points is better than play slick beautiful football and lose i'd agree with you there so jal uh, keep getting your comments in everybody really fascinated to to um hear what's being said here uh let's have a look uh have you felt no i haven't fallen out with him mate um yeah he made yeah listen he me and joe mates i think he had a bit of a <laughs> he had a bit of a moment the other night um where you know he probably shouldn't have have, have tweeted what he tweeted and look he apologized me to me today he sent me a message and and yeah look it's water under the bridge from my side i don't i'm i'm i'm, I'm friends with joe and um listen I, I yeah the the heat of passion and football can be a thing um but i never I, I don't i try not to bring it online because i want you know i sort it out as friends behind the scenes if, if we've got different opinions and yeah i i, I me and joe had a conversation i was there. <laughs> if there's ever anything like that Let's keep it offline because I don't want you guys, you know, having making your own narratives and stuff like that. Me and Joe hate each other because that's just not the case. Um, we always try big up other channels on here. We always try be positive in this space. I don't ever want to. I'm not saying Joe's not, by the way, because Joe's Joe's brilliant at what he does and he's fantastic. Um, but I, I always try big people up on here, and I want this to be an environment where everybody is doing well. Ollie Ward's video the other day, fantastic. All of you need to go check it out. I appeared on that. We all need to big each other up in this space. And I think that's really, really important because we're all Leeds fans at the end of the day. We're all here for a common interest and a common reason. It's to support the club and we should be supporting each other. And that's that's what I try do with this space. So yeah, um, that's that's all I'm going to say on that matter, by the way. I'm going to leave it there. Um, let's have a quick look uh, at some of the comments. Uh, there's no heat of passion in Hull. Imagine living there. Listen, Gabe. Everybody get on Gabe because he's slagging off English towns again. Gabe, we're all getting a bit sick of you slagging off English towns, mate. Uh, joking. Uh, thoughts on Kamara tonight, Connor? I thought he struggled, pal. I thought he really struggled tonight. I thought, as I keep saying, the dynamic between him and, and Archie, I didn't understand why Archie was the defensive one and Kamara was the attacking one. That makes no sense. I don't think Kamara is a better uh, defensive midfielder than than Archie, but I think Archie gives you a lot more going forward as, as an almost you know number eight really um and i think that could have been dealt with a lot better i think i think it looks like when you're watching this game that um you know both of them are are, are, are essentially sixes <laughs> uh, which i didn't really understand um there's a nah. I'm a, I'm a lover, mate, not a fighter. Thanks for your donation anyway. Thanks for the uh, donation anyway. Um, Connor, until Somerville scored, I was worried this Easter weekend was going to end up like the 2018-19 Easter weekend when we dropped um, out of the top two, uh, having lost the 10 men. Weekend. Yeah, mate, 100%. And it was going that way. It was going that way. I was thinking to myself, you know, I was getting really, as you can imagine, you guys have seen me before when I'm, I'm losing my mind when it comes to this club. But um yeah, we all show passion in different ways, don't we? And I think that's the the beauty of being Leeds United and football fans. It's it's just nuts. And yeah, I was I was uh, I, I was stress free throughout the game because I was thinking they're just better. Like at the minute, they're just better on the ball. They're just they're just better than us. And I, you know what I was thinking throughout. I thought, and this is another little point as well. Worst case scenario, where to get into the playoffs? Right. Worst case scenario. Because I, I still think we'd go up through the playoffs, by the way. If we finish third, I wouldn't want to be playing them over two legs. <laughs> if they creep into sixth over Norwich, I do not want to be playing them over two legs. And this is what we're talking about right now. That's why we just do not want to fall into that playoff spot at all. <laughs> we do not want to be like playing. A, I do not want a, a, a scenario where I'm playing Hull over two legs, to be quite honest with you. Um 
Let's have a quick look. Uh, do, do, do. Keep any comments in, everybody. There's nearly 18. There's over 18 under review in the building. This is great to see. Please make sure you slap a like on the build it the, the building. Uh, I love Volley Ward Sky questions video. Okay, check it out. Yeah, Ollie's a top lad. I've got a lot of time for Ollie. He's a nice lad. Um, all the YouTube uh, content producers are great. Give a lot of time to the club and to the fans. Keep up the great work. Cheers, mate. Really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, keep getting your comments in on the game. Uh, Fraser says. Hey, Rai, in the, in, the, in the link, mate, Georgie says, let's go. He did it again tonight. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> link in the description below, mate. Um, Connor says, Fraser, uh, that just felt like the Leicester game. We didn't play well and left it late with the opposition probably being the better side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were. They were. We have to be honest. It was it was one of those where you take... I mean, I'm, I'm seeing Liam Rossini is there now and he must be dead proud of the side, but a moment of madness, really, from Slater at the back, the, you know, the, the, the filling in right back and it all went to pot. It completely all went to pot, obviously. The, the keeper went up and I don't know, I did, did think to myself, is it that desperate? I don't know, maybe I'm just being a bit weird there, but is it that desperate? And I thought, you know, but I guess it's, yeah, I just wonder with stuff like that, you know, you're 2-1 down and I think goal difference is just massive in these things. Like we saw Leicester recuperate that goal difference on us today and it's massive. It can be worth an extra point. I just thought to myself, you, you keep her coming up there, you know, you, you, take, you, you take your licks you know, you, you you sort of heal up those wounds and, and you go with a 2-1 deficit, not a 3-1 deficit. And I just thought it was it was a bit odd, I thought, to be honest. But it is what it is. Look, I kind of understand they needed a, a point out of that. So there you go. Um, yeah, keep getting your comments in, everybody. Hull are a very good team. We got lucky tonight, but hopefully this is the result that kicks us back into gear. And I think we need that. I think, we're, I'll, I'll be honest, and, and, and Brandon's just said, we've got Coventry up next. You know, Coventry's up next. That's It's not easy. So another game, you know, we saw, we, we've seen at this moment in time, a really fluid Coventry front line. You've got Ellis Sims there. You've got um, uh, Hadji as well, um, Hadji Wright. And and listen, you've got obviously uh, Sakamoto as well, who's playing really, really well for them. You've got Callum O'Hare, the championship's Grealish, the Kov, Kov Grealish. They've got a good team. They've got a good team there and he's a good manager um is Mark Robbins so it's going to be another tough one and it's away from home but this team we, we miss Willie Nonto I, I think massively I do I just think he's coming into form seven goals I think some of it was quiet and Nonto was taking up the mantle a little bit to be honest with you being part of this setup and I thought he was he was really becoming Leeds's key player um clutch goals as well great finishes involved in a lot of a lot of good attacking work for Leeds United and you saw today look Dan got his goal Dan got his goal but he's Technically, he's not on the same level as Willie Nonto. He's just not. And, and I think Nonto, uh, he's a better striker of the ball. He's more press resistant. You'll see Dan sort of spooning the, the ball or spoon off his foot and he'll maybe lose it. And he's a bit erratic trying to get back. Nonto's a much silkier player, much more composed on the ball. Um, and he's devastating, as, as, as we've seen against Millwall. And, and Dan's done a really, really good job this season. But if you're measuring them both up next to each other, who you'd want in a running, in my opinion, um, I want the player who is able to you know, do things with a ball over a player who is not just effort, endeavour and energy, but is more of that than the other. Um, I think Willie Nyonto is a, is, a, is a top player. And I think he's a, t I think he's a top 10 um, Premier League winger, to be quite honest with you. And I've always said as well, I wonder what he's like in that 10. The Italians love him in that number 10. Um, I wonder what he'd be like with Leeds United in that spot as well, just inverting. But yeah, he's massively missed at the minute. I think he's a he's a real quality operator who's come into his own a little bit. I thought Daniel Farker had managed him really well. And it's just a shame we're not seeing a lot of him right now, obviously with his injury two or three weeks out. So he'll miss that Kov game. But right now, it is all about Daniel Farker utilising a lot of the rotation. You know, you've got stuff on the bench there. You've still got Joel Perot on 11 goals this season. You've got Matteo Joseph, who is as sharp as a knife. And I'd be starting him. I'd be starting him. I've said it. I, 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 can't, I can't stop saying it. There's no downside to starting him apart from experience. And I don't think... I, I, I don't think there's experience. I'm, 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 you know, at this point in the season, I think Joseph is chomping at the bit, and I, and I love him. I think he's tenacious. I think he's aggressive, and I've, I've mentioned all of his attributes beforehand. But he, he, he gives defenders nightmares because of his pace and his, um, his want to win. I'm not saying Bamford doesn't have that, but right now I'd rather have a sharper player like like Joseph causing defences problems. And it's something different. Jaden Anthony as well, I'd like to see him a little bit more. I think when he's featured, I thought when he featured against Watford, he was very good. Chelsea, he was exquisite. There is, there is an option there for Daniel Farker to utilise rotation without really dropping any quality, if we've been honest with you. Bamford, there is no there is no drop-off in quality to, to um, you know, uh, uh, Joseph. 
Jaden Anthony, I think anywhere along that three, really. I think Crisencio, Somerville and Rutter are, are a specific partnership right now. But you do wonder if there's a bit of rotation between Anthony and James every now and again. Is there a massive quality drop-off? I don't think so. And then, you know, Peru as well. Peru's there as well. And a lot of, a lot of people are forgetting, you know, at, at some points, I wouldn't mind seeing um, Gellhart at some point. There's Gellhart on the bench for 10, 15 minutes in that number 10, not in that nine, but in that 10. You know, there's options there for Farker. And I think he's got to rotate a little bit right now. It's risky because any point can see you drop off. South, Southampton are done now, in my opinion. They're done. Um, and I think all their fans are saying it online as well. You know, I know they've got two games in hand, but they're done. Um, dropping points. They've only got a point over this Easter break. doesn't matter if you have 95% possession in both games. If you don't put the ball in the back of the net, it doesn't matter. Um, I think they're resigned to, to, to the playoffs right now. And yeah, so there is a risk in it. There is a risk in it, but I'm, I'm willing to take the risk with, with certain rotations there. Um, but, you know, I'm not a manager. Uh, Gelhart, what on earth? Yeah, listen, it's just an option. It's just an option right now. Um, Gabe, you were the guy who was was absolutely slamming me weeks ago for su even even suggesting Matteo Joseph over Bamford. And now I bet your head's been turned. <laughs> um, keep getting your comments in, everybody. He's an option, isn't he? Hold to beat Ipswich. Yeah, I don't know if it's away or at home. Joseph is unreal, mate. He is, mate. Yeah, he's, uh, I don't think Kamara's average at all, to be honest with you. I think average is just... Yeah, I just I, I think I think average is a player who you know wouldn't be selected week in week out by Daniel Farker because I think we've got a lot of really decent uh, midfielders in this team. Kamara's picked week in week out, and and I think that's something to take into consideration when we're looking at him. His profile is very unique. I think he's press resistant, which helps in a midfield. I think in stages it helped tonight, but you've got to you've got to take the uh, technically wise that whole city midfield is built up very nicely, very very nice, and they're better on the ball than we are. The better on the ball. In that first game we played them, um, they were as good as us and they looked like they've developed as a team. Um, we looked shaky on the ball. And I know Gruev in there gives you definitely a bit of momentum when it comes to passing and all this sort of stuff and ticking over. But I do wonder Gruev tonight, if he'd have had this press on him, that hole we're putting on him, I wonder how he'd have dealt with that because I don't think he's done. Aside from Stoke away, that when there was a mad press put on him and he completely folded, I don't really think he's had that since, to be honest with you. And the problem is, in that situation, we're all talking about Gruev being in there. We needed we need a player to go forward in those positions. Ampadu, in that number six position, at least tries to put the ball forward because all we had in that game was a midfielder, who was Archie Gray, and Kamara passing it backwards. That's all we had. So passing it backwards, passing it backwards, ticking it over. But we weren't getting beyond that. And when we did get beyond that, it'd be Jorginho Rutter coming all the way back to try and receive the ball off one of the defenders or Archie or Kamara and breaking the line and trying to get leads 50 yards up the pitch. The attack was there. The defence was there. Uh, sorry, the attack that was there. The midfield was there. The defence was there. There was too much space between them. Um, and there has been that at points this season as well. Too much space between um, certain certain phases. So overall... Um, I think I think Gruev would have struggled tonight as well. I think Gruev would have struggled tonight as well. It feels like one of those things with Elia that when he's been in the side, we've been winning games. So if he was back in there, we'd have been fine tonight. But I think he'd have really, really struggled under that whole City press tonight because we needed him to get the ball forward, not just tick the ball over, which is what he does. You can't rely on Gruev to be able to get leads forward. He's not that type of player. So the profile that he is wouldn't have done us any favours tonight anyway, in my opinion. Um, I think you needed Ampadu in there, which would mean you know you need a Pascal Strout back. But that is that is the game perfect, in my opinion, for Ampadu. And I think that had a balanced Archie out quite well. Um, Keep getting your comments in, everybody. Let's have a quick look at some more. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, so tentative at the back, sideways. I agree with you. I agree. It was it was sideways. Um, Joseph must start. No debate. Interesting. Bamford done now. Says Chris. Yeah, but Kamara, he's definitely scared of shooting. We saw that one where he laid it off to um, Somerville and it was quite staggering. I can't believe he didn't shoot there, but there we go. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I don't think Bamford's done. I think Bamford's got a job to do. I think Bamford is... He, he, he never, if he starts for us in the Premier League, I'm going to put Med through a wall. I can't be dealing with that again. But um, Joseph is the, he's the starter. He's the starter. And what will happen is Bamford might score in the next game and I'll get loads of comments on this video saying, what were you saying? What were you saying? But 
I, I believe Joseph would score maybe the next game as well. I believe Joseph would give us more incisive movements movements going forward. I believe Joseph would bring other players into the game. I believe Joseph is going to be a more problematic option, a problematic player. If I'm if I'm a Hull City defender tonight, I'm rather playing. I'm, I'm much rather playing up against Pat Bamford than I am Joseph because Joseph makes you do that as a defender. And he's, and he's quick, which defenders hate. But Joseph makes you do that. Bamford is in front of you. And I think that's quite easy to mark, to be honest, because he's not got that pace to lay it off and then spin. So, yeah, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, agreed. Agreed, Gabe. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, right, guys, that's been it from me. I've been going for about 45 minutes. Uh, listen, I'm going to head off now, but I'm gonna go, we're going to have videos tomorrow morning if you guys want to tune in. We'll have a live at around about 10 o'clock. Going through the game, talking about the three things that we learned as well, but also going through the fixtures uh, this weekend and really breaking them apart. That's going to be full-time with Connor tomorrow, combined with the three things that we learned tomorrow. We've also got the debrief, uh, the chat show with the lads. Uh, Tuesday evening, it'll be myself, Oscar and Gabe. And we're going to be talking everything leads, everything going forward and the promotion race right now, which is hotting up and we have one side out of the race. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want a bit of merch, link in the description below. Head on over to the Patreon if you want some podcast extensive content. And uh, yeah, you can become a YouTube member two quid a month as well, hitting the join button, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll see you on the other side. Cheers.